George Woods was born in St Albans in Hertfordshire on the 15th of May 1852. His father was William Windet Woods from Norfolk and he ran a successful drapery business in St Albans and George and his elder brother William also entered the drapery trade. In the 1870s they moved to Woking in Berkshire and his brother set up a business of William Woods Draper and Grocer. In 1878, George married a local girl, Mary Butler, whose family had a successful drapery business not far from the woods. In 1879, their daughter Margaret was born. In 1880, their father died, leaving both boys some shares, which was immensely helpful to George and Mary, and he also had an income through dabbling on the stock exchange, which helped George to pursue his hobby of photography. And with Mary's poor health, they decided to move to the coast. So they packed up their belongings and moved to Hastings, as Mary's brother John had a grocery business there in George Street, a rather aptly named road. So around 1889... They settled in a house in Mount Pleasant Road. Then after a period of about two years, they moved across the road to a more substantial property with a small garden, where they lived for ten years. In 1893, Mary was diagnosed with cancer. And in 1896, a sad period in George's life, she died, aged just 49. But George and Margaret continued to live in their Mount Pleasant home. In 1902, George married Ethel Rant. After their marriage, they moved with Margaret to Priory Avenue. But in 1911, tragedy struck again, as Margaret was also diagnosed with a cancerous illness. And in 1914, she died aged just 35. George and Ethel had a passion for cycling and spent many hours cycling all over the county. Ethel was a deeply religious person. George died in 1934 of cancer, age 81, after a four-year illness, but Ethel lived on up until 1962, age 90. Here is a collection of George's photos of Hastings and the fishing community, the beach, parade and town, put together with a narration of Hastings' history from the year dot, when Hastings was not on any map, through all the successive battles and invasions up to the Victorian era, and is, I think, a concise and very interesting history of the boroughs of Hastings and St. Leonard's. Oh, and by the way, the woman in George's photos on the pier is thought to be his first wife, Mary, and the young girl in many of George's photographs, his daughter, Margaret. Hastings from Pre to Modern History, produced and narrated by Mike Wells. The origin of Hastings is somewhat obscure. However, it is certain that prior to the Roman invasion of 55 BC, it was inhabited by a race of early peoples from what is now Europe. But it is probable that this race of people established their settlement here while Britain was still part of mainland Europe. These people were of Goth origin, and unlike the ancient Britain of early history or prehistory, they had developed certain cultures. These Goths either discovered or already were skilled in producing iron from the clays of East Sussex. They were skilled farmers and lived in permanent settlements. The ancient Britain of prehistory would appear to have been, in contrast, savage hunting nomads. The actual fortification of Hastings was developed by Arvigus in AD 50. 
The first Saxons under their leader Aella defeated the early Britons at the siege of Andracesta. They named their area South Saxon, which of course became Sussex at a later date. In AD 771, Offa, king of the Mercians, subdued by force of arms the rape of Hastingai, and a quote by G. Taylor in his book Words and Places of Hastings in A.D. 790 as the noblest race of Goths since the Roman conquest. In the reign of Edward the Confessor, by decree in 1050, the zinc ports were established, comprising of Hastings, Dover, Hythe, Sandwich and Romney. The function of the zinc ports was to provide a navy defence of the channel coasts of Kent and East Sussex, and to provide a navy capable of engaging enemy ships at even greater distance from our shores. Edward the Confessor died on January the 5th, 1066, and King Harold was crowned. One of his first acts was to dismantle Hastinga Kestra, Hastings Castle, which at the time was a wooden structure. Although it is not known his reason for dismantling the castle, it can only be assumed that it was his intention to construct a more durable edifice on the site. The first year of King Harold's reign, which proved to be also his last, was extremely troubled, and he had to take his army to Yorkshire to subdue the claims of his brother to the crown at the Battle of Stanford Bridge. King Stephen stayed at Hastings Castle in 1148, and during his stay he abolished the Hastings Mint within the castle. In 1155, Thomas a Becket was dean of St Mary in the castle. King Henry built a keep and extensions to Hastings Castle in 1172, and in 1175 the Priory of the Holy Trinity was founded on the west bank of the Priory Haven Marshes by the Augustinian Order of Black Monks. In gratitude for the services of the zinc ports, in 1265, four barons from Hastings were summoned to attend the Parliament of Simon de Montfort. This was Hastings' first representation in Parliament. In 1274, King Edward I visited Hastings and issued an ordinance concerning the Trail of Pleas on ports. And in 1278, King Edward I granted a charter to the zinc ports, restoring their rights and privileges granted by successive monarchs since Edward the Confessor, but revoked by King John. In 1286, Alan the Cheesemonger and his wife Alice gave land to the Abbey of Feykamp on which to rebuild St Clement's Church on the site where it stands today. The original church, which was much nearer to the shore, had been destroyed by sea erosion, and in 1287 Winchelsea, which at the time was built on, on the level ground below the hill, was inundated by the sea and completely destroyed. In 1293 the ships of the zinc ports had sailed into action off the French coast, shattering the French fleet. For this act of gallantry, Hastings was granted its coat of arms. In 1601, John Barley died. It is not known who or what he was, but his name is perpetuated in Barley's Lane. This lane or track probably dates from the time that Fairlight Place was built, and it connects the town of Old Hastings with the house. In 1618, the thatching of roofs was forbidden, by local order to restrict the risk of fire in Hastings. In 1625, a plague of smallpox caused many deaths in the town. Hastings was isolated and the movement of residents was rigidly restricted in order to confine the disease. In 1627, a Dunkirk privateer bombarded the town while the populace were at Sunday morning service. A cannonball lodged in the tower of the Church of St. Clement's with great speed, the seamen of Hastings rushed from the church and gave chase. The cannonball can be seen in the church tower today, where it has been joined by a second one, implanted to balance the effect. In 1643, while Sunday service was in progress at All Saints Church, it was learned that a force of Cromwell soldiers were approaching from Orr. The vicar escaped, but was later captured and taken to London, 
he again escaped and regained his freedom. The soldiers confiscated all arms in the town, and soldiers were billeted in the church. This was the only incident during the civil war affecting Hastings. John Collier's residence in Hastings was the mansion, later known as Old Hastings House, which occupied a site in extensive grounds at the north end of High Street. He lost his first wife, by whom he sired several children, but remarried and produced eighteen more, thirteen of whom died during his lifetime, including all of his sons. The first Hastings cricket ground was opened at Collier's Road Field in Prairie Road in 1750. In 1751, Colonel Pelham and Mr Stone were responsible for paving the high street at their own expense, and at the commencement of this undertaking they used stone from the castle which had fallen down the cliff face. In 1753, on May the 22nd, the first workhouse was opened in George Street. In 1815, James Burton and his son Decimus first visited the wild and beautiful cliff area of what today is St. Leonard's, and they realised the potential for development. The cliffs and hinterland were virtually uninhabited at the time, and they set about the design of a complete town structure before a stone was laid. Their original plans had to be altered and amended in detail, as can well be imagined for this was the first occasion at which a town structure had ever been planned before development took place. James and Decimus Burton were architects. Decimus, in fact, was the designer of the great arch at Hyde Park Corner, at the head of Constitutional Hill in London. During the early part of the 19th century, the Hastings Corporation were greatly concerned by the effect of the America ground to their progressive plans of further development. It could not be purchased because it was no man's land, but a solution had to be found. Hastings Corporation sought advice from the Crown Law Officers to resolve the problem. After a considerable period of deliberation, the Crown agreed to take possession of the land in 1829, and Hastings had no claim to it, and an order of compulsory evacuation by all and sundry, and all of the structures to be demolished from the area. Those in possession were allowed a maximum of seven years to complete evacuation. The Hastings Corporation thereupon undertook to lease the land from the Crown. Robertson Street, Carlisle Parade, Harold Place, Claremont and Trinity Street are still today leased from the Crown. The Hastings Embroidery was commissioned from the London School of Needlework in 1966 as a successor to the Bayer Tapestry, depicting nine centuries of English history. In 1977, an appeal by the Borough of Hastings was made to the government for financial assistance to repair the disintegrating harbour jetty. It was feared that the sea erosion through the broken harbour wall would destroy the staid and cliffs of the East Hill at Rockanore. In the summer of 1977, a legislation allowing the borough to promote lotteries. Hastings promoted a bi-monthly lottery to help to finance a sports project at Summerfields. Pre the petrol-driven omnibus and before the railways were constructed in 1846, Hastings was frequented by stagecoaches. In 1731, a coach known as the Regulator operated once weekly from the Swan Inn at Hastings to London. This coach departed from Hastings at 4 a.m. on Monday and took three days to complete the journey. On Monday it reached Robertsbridge, where the passengers spent the night in a local inn, and on Tuesday night they again stayed overnight at Sevenoaks, and arrived in London on Wednesday evening. The return journey departed from London on Thursday morning, stopping overnight at Sevenoaks and Robertsbridge, and arrived back in Hastings on Saturday evening. Another trade plied before and during this time was smuggling. Here are a few of the smugglers' landing places in Hastings. The Old Woman's Tap, the site of the Royal Victoria Hotel. Stussels at Bo Peep. Gin's Stool at Galley Hill. The Slide, Rockanore, The Whippings, Ecclesbourne, Westcliff, Robin Whiting's Hole, Ecclesbourne, Eastcliff, 
Broken Shins and Gringer, between Ecclesbourne and Covehurst Bay, the Govers, Covehurst Bay, Marabone Gap, Fairlight Signal Station. Between 1600 and 1820, smuggling was a major industry in Hastings.